Hello everyone, welcome to HRC Games. Today we're going to take a look at D-Day at Omaha Beach by Decision Games, designed by John Butterfield. This is a game that covers, obviously, the invasion on D-Day of Omaha Beach. It is more of a um, unit size game, so you're dealing with individual units that are moving um, onto the beach and then up the bluffs uh, to try and secure the positions along the beachhead. It is a game that's a little bit on the more complex or hefty side, so it's not something you're going to open up and play You know, 15 minutes later. You're going to need to invest a little bit of time in the rules, but I think if you put the time into it and you learn the rules, you're going to get a lot of enjoyment out of this game. This is not a game that you're probably going to win every time you play. It's a challenging game. There is um, lots of things that you have to consider when you're moving your infantry along the beaches and your tanks along the beaches, where to move them, what to clear, when to fire, when not to fire. Um, there's a lot going on in this game that I think you have to get right in order to win. That's by no means a knock on the game whatsoever. I think that it's a challenging game and that makes it a lot of fun as well. So we're going to start off by going over what's in the box. What do you get with this game? One of the things that come in the box is this a historical pamphlet slash you know, a little mini book or whatever. Its title is The Greatest Day from Disaster to Victory on Omaha Beach. It's written by John Butterfield and it is a historical account of the actual invasion. It's a, it's a fascinating read. It does a really good job of, of showing you know what forces landed on what part of the beaches, what was involved in each of those things, and even like part of it gives a hour by hour description, much like the game follows and an, you know in 15 minute anchor increments as it goes along. So it's a it's a fascinating read. It's a nice little addition to this game. You obviously you don't need to read it or have it to to, to play the game at all. But I think if you're kind of like me, and a lot of the reasons why you play historical war games is to learn about history, then it's a nice addition. So it's definitely worth your time to peruse that nice little addition um, to the box. And of course you get a game, rule book, right? Most games wouldn't be complete without a rule book, but you do get one. Um, side rant about this in a good way. Um, it's not made with glossy paper. I don't know why the trend seems to be that everything gets put on glossy paper. Maybe I'm just getting old, I don't know. I like it when it's not glossy. I kind of like the old school paper. It's not um, as hard on the eyes when you're looking at it under lights. So I kind of appreciate that. Not that it really makes any difference to the game whatsoever. Just, okay, side rant, you know, is what it is. Okay, um, rule book's really good. It's dense, right? It's not very long, but there's a lot to it. There's a lot of detail. There's a lot of things that you need to pay attention to, a lot of conditions that are met. For instance, like when you're firing, you know, who you have to be adjacent to and who doesn't have to be adjacent to and the conditions that make good fire. Rule book does a really good job of explaining all that. But you will need to take the time uh, to learn the rules, to really kind of go through them, maybe take some notes, and give yourself some slack when you're playing. You're going to get a few things wrong as you go, um, and that's totally okay. It's part about learning the game. That is one of the things about games with a little bit of depth. you got to put the time into it, and this game is certainly no exception. But like I said, I think that the time investment's worthwhile. It is definitely a good game that you'll get a lot of replayability out of it, so even though the rules depending on your experience level with war games is maybe a little bit on the denser side. Um, there's definitely worth going through and learning those rules. Of course, you get the counter sheets too. Um, I've already punched out some. I've played a couple games, haven't used all the units yet. I did have a little bit of trouble getting a couple of the units to come out well. Uh, I don't know if it maybe was just my counter sheet run. Uh, they stuck in there a little bit. Some of the edges peeled a little bit. Um, so after I got them out, I just clipped the counters with my you know, a little counter clippy thing and everything turned out okay. The counters are easy to use, right? All the information's uh, easily seen. Nothing's too small. Everything's very clear. So I really like that as well. Uh, one division is a little bit darker green than the other division. So they're easy to keep separate uh, on the map, which is kind of nice because you can always tell who's who. You can kind of see here that they are a little bit different shades of color. This one's a good example. So if you look those up, they're clearly two different shades of green, so they're easy to tell uh, who belongs to what division, and of course the Germans are gray. Also, the game comes with a few charts, um, quick reference guides. This one here covers the amphibious results, so when you're moving off of or out of the landing boxes and onto the beach, you get your results from this sheet. Pretty easy to read, well laid out. And then you also have the German fire chart on the back of this. Again, easy to read does its job and then you get a couple of pages here of sequences of play 
and those are also easy to use and very helpful too. You also get an introductory scenario on this page, which I highly recommend that you're doing it. The rule book also recommends you do the same thing. It covers just the eastern portion of the board. A little bit smaller scenario helps you uh, get to know the rules. It kind of walks you through it with a little bit less detail than everything else, like so you don't have as many things to keep track of. Um, so I would highly recommend uh, using that uh, to get started as well. Uh, you know, I suppose if you've got quite a bit of experience with these types of games, you don't need to start there. Um, but I definitely think it's uh, it's worthwhile to learn that as well. So when I first got this game, I was a little uh, suspicious because I like to roll dice. And I was, you know, all right, here we got a bunch of cards with a whole bunch of information on them. Is it going to be fun without rolling dice? The answer to that question is yes. Um, I did not miss the dice rolling whatsoever. Um, each one of these sections of the car tells you what to do. So at the top here is your landing orders or what happens when you land. In the middle section is um, the events phase. So depending on what turn you're on in the game, you look here to see what events occur as you're going down the phase trackers. And then, of course, you have the attack results at the bottom of them. Um, very easy to use, pretty helpful. Also, as you're kind of going through them and you go across the, the turn tracker, It'll tell you when you need to reshuffle the deck as well, so you're constantly resupplying or reshuffling, I should say, so that you're not getting stale results and that things can always happen more than once, which is kind of a cool thing. One more thing that I think that would be helpful is to get this flip chart that is available on uh, Board Game Geek. It is a step by step uh, process for each phase of the game, um, and it's pretty helpful as far as, you know, kind of. All right, where do I look in the rules? And then you can read in two different spots. That might help you kind of keep things on track as well. Uh, really well designed, uh, pretty helpful. I would uh, highly recommend that if you don't have a lot of experience with these types of games, that you can pick this up and it'll help walk you through the game as well. It's not a replacement for the rule book. I think the rule book does a really good job in that regards, but sometimes it's nice to see how things are laid out if you go from a step-by-step -step basis. And it's also when you first start a good reminder or checklist so that you're not forgetting things as well. And of course you get a map. All games, well most games come with maps. This is a beautifully done map. It's a great thing to, to look at. It's got a ton of information on it. I think it could be a little bit overwhelming when you first open it up and look down at the map. You're like, whoa, what do all the dots mean? What do all the colors mean? Once you get past that initial shock and you start looking at the logic of the map, it's pretty helpful. So I'll show you a couple pictures as we go through. But if you notice all the dots there refer back to um, firing arcs, right? So they explain to you which of the which of the areas fire to which part of the map. So if you've got uh, your w, WNs here, like the red or the green, and then if you look out, you can see where the reds or the green go, and that's where that particular bunker or that particular hex can fire to. It's the field of fire. And depending on what the hex is, or what the dot is, sorry, will tell you uh, how strong that fire is as well. So a solid dot is something that is a very intensive fire. A dot that's kind of half and half there with the cool hourglass in it that is not as heavy as fire. And then something that is just the circle of sporadic fire. So it's not quite as heavy. So when you're moving, you can kind of figure out all right, if I move into this particular hex, then you know I'm going to take heavy fire from two different locations. Or, hey, this hex has just got two circles in it that aren't filled in. That's maybe a little bit safer of a hex to go into as well. And I think that is a really kind of a neat fu uh, function of the game. The map is, is quite simply um, really well done. In fact, it's pretty amazing. I, I really liked it a lot. Also at the top of the map, you have a turn tracker all the way at the top. Uh, to keep track of things, you also kind of just below the turn tracker, you have a phase section, which tells what helps you walk through the game phase by phase. Also very effective and very clear, which really what it means is you have almost everything, once you've played the game a few times, you have everything on the map that you would need, right? So you can keep track of things, you know where to place your cards. It's also a reminder of what steps come next. So it's really, really well laid out in those regards. So overall, like, like I said, I think the map is just outstanding. It not only does it look good, it is also uh, super functional um, and it's just really well laid out. So overall, what do we think about D-Day at Omaha Beach? I think it's a really good game. I think the design is uh, spot on. I think it's a challenging game. I think it's a game that you'll get a lot of mileage for your money. 
Uh, the downside of this game is that it is fairly complex. There's a lot of details to it. So if you're someone who enjoys picking up a, a game and then being able to play it an hour later and kind of know the flow and know the strategy and you don't have to think a lot about the rules, this may not be the game for you. If you are a more of a diehard war gamer who likes depth, who likes mechanics, who likes to really figure things out, uh, then this game is right up your alley and it won't disappoint. So it kind of depends in my mind uh, what you want out of your games. There are times when I think that if you just have an afternoon that you want to spend with some light gaming, this probably isn't the game that fits that need for that afternoon. If you have a day off of work and you want to spend the day gaming and thinking and you know really escaping everything, then this game is perfect for that. So it, it really isn't a well, one side. It's not a game that's going to, I think, be great for everyone. Uh, I do think, though, that it can be a really deep game that you could really get a lot of mileage out of if you want to devote the time into learning the system. And that's all we have for today. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe and the like button so you'll get notifications when we have our next set of videos up. Have a great rest of your day. Talk to you later.